practitioner or family medicine consultant can see anyone from newborn to elderly patient. And we are providing screening, preventative medicine. We are people who are happy to see you with any problems and we are happy to investigate and refer if it's needed. And also from next year, from April or May, very likely healthcare in Dubai will change because Dubai healthcare authorities advise everyone from next year start their clinic and hospital um, pathway from family medicine. So today I will tell you a little bit of, about of screening. So breast cancer, why do we talk about breast cancer every single October? Why do we worry about this? Because unfortunately it's still the most frequently diagnosed cancer in women and not only in women, in men as well. And in the UK and in the USA, this is second cause of cancer death among women. First one is lung cancer. In lots of countries, this is first top cause of cancer among women, and this is really sad. The incidence of breast cancer, new cases of breast cancer are raising every, in every single country, despite all the research and studies. And the same we can see here in Middle East countries. Also here, we found that it's not only the most common cancer, but it also, unfortunately, we seen advanced late stage of the cancer first time diagnosed, but a very high mortality rate. And there are lots of possible causes for this. And also it's very sad, it's very delayed diagnosis here. So this slide showed you very sad statistic. And at the same time, this slide can demonstrate that cancer is real. Cancer doesn't care about us. That's why we should take care about of ourselves and be in charge of our health. So if you just imagine that one in eight women will get breast cancer during their lifetime, usually it happens after the age of 40 or 50. And also, if you're talking about the UK, every single day, 31 patients dying from breast cancer. And it's not only women. Sometimes it can be a man as well. Every single year in the UK, 55 and a half thousand women are diagnosed with breast cancer. And just under the 1% of them will be men every single year. So um, to understand how we could protect ourselves, let's go back to the basics about breast anatomy. I will tell you that breast, it's a gland which is sitting outside of our body on the top of the ribs and muscles. And it's made up of fat tissue. On the um, left picture, it's in gray. And also the main tissue is a glandular tissue. And it's been designed by our nature to feed babies. So glandular tissue presented with the lobes and they consist of many lobules. On the picture, you could see they look like a leaves. They come in together with the milk ducts and eventually they gathering together and creating a nipple. So the breast usually different during our lifetime. Let's say in our 20s, when we are young, we've got more glandular tissue and it makes our breast being more dense, more textured, and it gives us a shape. With age, after the age of 50, after our menopause, some glandular tissue replaced with the fat, and our breast becomes very soft and shape changed. Our breast change during pregnancy, and also if you've got periods, just before periods, our breast becomes a bit like swollen, again, more dense. Sometimes people say, it's very tender and it's very difficult to investigate and examine. And just after our periods, breast becomes softer. So it's very hormonal changes. Usually breast cancer um, develop in the milk ducts inside of them. So what is cancer? We don't know why this is happening, but we do know some risk factors that we'll discuss a bit later. So cancer developed from one abnormal so-called crazy cell 
which for some reason start uh, multiplying and dividing and growing out of control. And usually it happens inside the milk duct. So by growing and multiplying over and over it, again, it develop that growth inside the milk duct like a tumor. And when it's sitting on the inside, it's stage one of breast cancer. And this is probably the most, the best stage to diagnose with, with the best survival rate up to 99% and with the best outcome. Once this growth going through the walls outside the milk duct to the breast tissue surrounding its invasive cancer, so the outcome would be much worse. So if you're looking on the right picture, it's a lymphatic system. So our breast connected to our body, not only with the skin, but also with lymphatic system, which is so-called cleaning system. All these vessels and nodules, they are draining all waste material from peripheral area to the veins to clean our body. And any broken cells and also any cancer cells, they go going to the first our armpit lymphatic nodules. It's like a door between the breast and the body. So, and this is the reason why we need to always pay attention to armpits, axilla area, where we could have big lymph nodes sitting and shouting that there is something wrong in the breast and cancer can be so small inside that we cannot feel it. So about risk factors. So as I told you, we do not know why exactly cancer happening, but we know that there are some risk factors which gives us more chances to get the breast cancer. And of course, first two, being a woman and getting older, unfortunately, are our biggest enemies. So um, we do know that about 85% of breast cancer happening after the age of 50 and we need to pay attention to this age. Uh, despite being a woman, the biggest risk factor, men can have breast cancer too, because they also have got a little bit of glandular tissue. Also personal and family history, I'm sure you know from the media and from books and newspapers about different stories, burka um, and um, relatives who may have breast cancer and after they give you lots of risk factors. We can see this from our patients when they come in, come in to see us very anxious, having relatives with breast cancer. And we mainly concerned when this is first um, great relative, such as mother, sister or daughter, or man in a family had the breast cancer. So-called Burka 1 and Burka 2 genes, altered faulty genes, which can give us um, high risk of having not only breast cancer, but ovarian cancer. It's very good to know about them, to be aware how just to look after ourselves and screen your breast. Uh, there were lots of studies which showed that reproductive history as well pain and, and giving us lots of problems in future. So, but it's not really significant. And with the chest radiation and chemotherapy, this is to be aware about, for example, chest X-ray or young women or even children who've got um, any chemotherapy, they may have problems in future. So the previous risk factors, it was very difficult to change. They're usually with us, it's our life, but there are risk factors which we can to take under control. They are modifiable. And first four of them, they giving us the high risk of breast cancer. And they sounds like it's just a lifestyle. So we definitely know that lots of studies demonstrated that um, alcohol misuse, being overweight after menopause, having unhealthy diet and having lack of exercise are giving us the highest risk. And this risk would be higher than number five, which is uh, taking combined hormonal replacement therapy for, let's say, for menopause for over five years or being on combined contraceptive pills. And usually when we, you've got this medication, doctor talking about this minimal risk of breast cancer. And also studies showed that having HIT or combined pills giving you not aggressive cancer and mainly cancer which you could pick up um, by screening. 
About smoking, uh, we had only a few studies which demonstrated clear risk factor and few studies, they um, did not show any significant difference. About family history, I noticed that lots of patients coming back to us after having mother or sister with breast cancer newly diagnosed and they want to know what's their chances. And surprisingly, uh, lots of studies in different countries showed us that only up to 15% of women with breast cancer that got a uh, family member and up to 85% of women with breast cancer, they never had any family history of it. So this showed that we should pay attention on other risk factors as well, not only family history. And also I've seen few um, women, especially in the UK, who've been convinced that they would never have breast cancer only because their family, they never had this diagnosis before, which is quite full belief. So what we should look for, what are the symptoms we worry about? It's not only lumps and bumps. It's absolutely different any change you could pick up. So this um, picture I really like, and I took it from the app. I'm going to tell you about this app later. So it showed you wide range of changes you could pick up. And we're looking at your breast skin, any thickness, any change in shape, in color. For example, the second lemon uh, from the top, dimple. It's absolutely normal for any of us to have dimples on the skin at the end of hot day after wearing uh, very tight clothing, but it should disappear within a couple of hours. So if dimples stay in there for days, this is something not right. Come to us, let us investigate and examine you. For example, something happened to the nipple. It never been there. Nipple became crusty or something coming out from the nipple, like discharge. It's very unusual when you don't breastfeed at the moment. Or redness or hot area on your breast or any sore area which don't go within a couple of days. Any lumps and bumps, brand new, very unusual veins like bulging, like varicose veins. Um, change of the nipple which going inside like sunken nipple. Um, any unusual new shape which you never had before. Or skin which look like an orange peel. And of course, any lump. So just in case, I would like to tell you that some of them, they can be caused by lots of other benign problems. We've got lots of benign lumps and bumps, but only investigation and examination can show us whether it's something sinister or benign. So what happened if you pick up any lump? What happened if you pick up any change? We would like you to come and see us. So we going to, um, of course, talk to you first to find out any possible risk factors for how long you've been having this problem, what exactly you worry. If you worry, we definitely worry about you. And very likely we will arrange some investigations. So um, for young women uh, at the age of probably under 40s, we definitely will arrange ultrasound scan. For women at the age from 40s, we will arrange mammogram. If you pick up any lump, including your breast or armpit, it's definitely um, worth to do biopsy, to take a little bit, a piece of tissue with a big needle and look under microscope. And this biopsy confirm diagnosis, whether it's something benign or whether it's something sinister to worry about. And if it's a cancer, it will tell us which type of the cancer, because there are lots of lots of different types. In young women, when we are dealing with a dense um, breast tissue, we usually arrange MRI scan as well. And of course, it's very important to have follow up with a clear discussion and explanation of findings. So we are always talking about mammogram. What is this? This is low intensity um, X-ray investigation. So it's X-ray of your right breast and left breast. It's absolutely not painful. You just need to stand very close to the machine which takes this image. 
So without any feelings, it's very quick and it's very safe because um, this part of radiation, they specifically designed it on a very, very low intensity. Why we like mammogram? Why we uh, put it on the top of our screening list? Because it can detect breast cancer or any change at a very early stage, at least one to two years before we can feel it at least one to two years before we could see any change, which is very important. And if any of you are aware about a British screening program, so mammogram there um, advised to women from the age of 50 every three years. So if you just imagine that in between these three years, if breast cancer appear, it can grow. So because sometimes we need to do this on a frequent um, fashion. So that's why knowing that the mammogram can pick up the change at least one to two years before we can feel it, it's very good point to have mammogram every single year and not from the age of 50, but from the age of 40. If someone is diagnosed with a breast cancer, they are going to be under the care of multidisciplinary team. And there are, of course, breast surgeon, oncologist, radiologist, who are going to uh, look at the, every single image in future and compare to the previous one. Of course, there are lots of nursing staff and psychologists. And also, if your health require anything else in terms of heart, kidneys, or anything else, it will be another consultant as well. Nowadays, um, probably within last two, three decades, treatment went much, much uh, far and changed completely. So nowadays, treatment is tailored specifically for each patient. Every, even if you imagine uh, women with the same age, with the same diagnosis, only because they are different. They've got different um, baseline of their health. They've got different uh, changes. They will be given different treatment. And usually treatment is a combination or just selective, like a surgery, chemotherapy, radiotherapy, hormone treatment, and of course, follow-up and monitoring. So we keep talking again and again that early detection saves lives and we very passionate about screening for breast cancer because this is the only way we could save lives. So we here um, providing information and trying to encourage you. Let's do mammogram every single year from the age of 40 just to protect yourself. Also, in between mammograms, the best preventative mm, tool the best screening tool is self-examination. We will speak about a bit later. And if you found before any benign problem, for example, I've got benign lumpy in my breast, I am aware about this. We need to monitor this on a regular basis. Be sure that nothing changed in that area, which we know is a problem already. So everyone asking, is it true that breast screening definitely works? It definitely works because for many years uh, since um, NHS breast screening program uh, been working, they collected lots of data and they did show that a uh, number of deaths from breast cancer significantly reduced by 35% and it's great in the last 20 years. And also um, NHS managing to save thousands of lives every year, but of course it's not enough. So let's talk about breast self-examination. I know it's very overwhelming slide, but we will start from the left side and slowly move to the right side. So um, it's there is no wrong way to do breast examination. If you come in to see us doctors, we'll do proper clinical examination and you don't need to do absolutely the same all over again. You need to find some way that you're comfortable with. But the main is to remember three points. First, you need to look for any changes. Next one, you need to feel your breast for any changes. And last, remember about your armpits. So 
If you just imagine a, a woman with the periods, as I explain you about density and texture of our breast, the best time to do self-examination is about three, four days after your periods finish. This is a time when your breast is very soft and you will feel more comfortable feeling it and you will be able to feel more and more. And if woman has no periods for any reason, even with age, just to make like a calendar or reminder, maybe first date of each month, but it should be on a monthly basis. So what we should do? It should be, of course, some private area. You need to be comfortable. First advisable uh, step would be if you stand in front of the mirror with your hands and um, arms down, you could put your hands on the hips and look in the mirror. Look at the shape, look at the skin, look for any changes, color, shape, texture, lumps and bumps, veins. Also, of course, pay attention to your nipples and area pigmented around areola. If uh, some people just squeezing the nipples just to double check whether anything coming from them. But of course, you probably you will notice on the bra if something coming out. Uh, next step would be to raise your arms up in the air and it will open your breast. You can see more skin under the nipples and also you could see your armpits. So this is very important just to look at this. And you know that right and left breast, they're usually different. One breast usually a bit bigger, another breast usually a bit smaller. So just knowing this, that it's your body, so you will pick up change at any stage, early stage. So step three would be to feel your breast. So when you just start and when you don't feel comfortable about this, maybe a very good tip to do this in a shower. First of all, you're relaxed. And next, um, if you put a little bit of foam on the skin around your breast and it makes skin soft and slippery and it's very, very easy to palpate just to try this first time. So there are two options, uh, whether you um, first lying down and this makes your breast flat and after you stand it up and by gravity breast coming out, yeah, or vice versa, for example, you start uh, with a shower and after you come in and lying down. So when you lying down, uh, you just imagine that you're using, it's advisable to use a right uh, hand to investigate and examine your left breast and your left hand for your right breast. So if you look on the picture on the right side, um, it's uh, clearly our finger parts, our fingertips of index, middle and ring fingers are the best area to feel. So I found that for myself, I did not find helpful and useful to use little finger. So I'm using index, middle and ring. So them all together, if you put and put on your skin, you need to start from your nipple, just Firstly, put and softly press and after firmly press and slowly start motions. Just find for yourself the three options, whether you're going up and down and slowly covering entire breast area, up and down, up and down, or you're going into the circles. Start from the nipple and slowly, slowly by doing the circle motions, you cover an entire breast or you're doing veggies movements and just again covering entire breast and at the end remember your armpits so um absolutely the same the advice to repeat standing and line position and at the end again remember armpits for any bulging any new lumps and bumps so let's say this way um we don't want you just to do something what you're not comfortable with for example uh I found that for myself, I'm using, I'm right-handed. I'm using right hand to self-examine my both breasts and it's more comfortable for me. I could feel it better. So if you're not comfortable with your another hand, don't use it, just try it with one. But just remember that you need to find the way one out of three, whether you're doing up and down, whether it's circles or wedges. For example, I'm always using circles for to do clinical examination for my patients and for myself, because for me, it's easier to remember and easier to cover. And uh, 
again, just remember, whatever you find, it's not always a cancer. It may be something benign, but if you find something new, just come and tell us. So, of course, breast cancer numbers of new cases overwhelming, but it's still there is something positive about our medicine and about our science. We've got this pink October and it's great to have this education and awareness every single year. It's been with us since 1985. And even here in Dubai, um, where we live with the private insurance companies uh, away from NHS, Every single October, there are hospitals and clinics which can give you a very good discount to have this mammogram at any age. There are places which, um, where you could have absolutely for free, they open door for everyone, all population. I can give you an example. For example, this October, I decided to make a present to my best friend who never had mammogram. I just presented this to her because it was very affordable. And she was so happy after seeing normal result. It just gave her so much reassurance that she was just scared to go there and have it. But I made her. And very good point to remember that screening tools, both mammogram and uh, self-examination, they are effective and they do work if you're doing them properly, of course, and on a regular basis. And we do know that treatment uh, for breast cancer changed significantly. People live life longer but again the earlier you diagnose the early breast cancer code the better survival rate the less aggressive treatment you need the better quality of life the woman will have and of course it less affecting families colleagues and friends around and uh, uh, i was really happy to see that more and more men coming they come in uh, just with any concerns about um, their breast. And I'm happy to find out that definitely men, they realize they can have breast cancer too. And they come in with the simple lumps and bumps. And we will deal with this absolutely the same fashion as we're dealing with the women. But of course, there are still lots of inequality in screening and the problems with the private insurance companies. But if you just come in at any age, we always we will find out how to um, explain to insurance company and cover any investigations at any age. And we just we, we know how to do with this, uh, how to deal with them. We, we know what to put on our notes to give you some investigations and reassurance if any concerns. So um, I uh, look um, into artificial intelligence and digital tools before doing this presentation because uh, so many young people just they go in into media and apps and I found that probably one of the best so clever so entertaining and uh, very attractive um, app is Know Your Lemons Breast Check it's very popular in the UK. It was designed by a woman who lost her grandmother to breast cancer. So she dedicated her entire career and she um, had qualification in um, health. Um, I think it was health communication. So she designed this up in a very. Uh, can I hear? Yeah. Okay. She designed this up in, in a very interesting and entertaining way. So nowadays, lots of um, secondary schools and colleges using them in the UK. So what it's doing, first of all, it's for free and uh, it's giving you education. It reminds you every single month to check your breast. And if you put date of your period, it will remind you when exactly is the best way. And also in a very funny and entertaining way, it will explain you how to do it. So it's very, very clever and I found that young people love it. And I think it's probably one of the best way how to spread this awareness about breast cancer, about self-examination, about this screening tool. Uh, and about the possible future, what I spotted um, last month or a couple of months ago uh, in the UK, um, Dyson Award was nominated and given to two very clever and talented uh, students of Royal College um, of Art. They design um, so-called portable 
uh, I'm still not 100% sure what is that, but sounds like it's ultrasound scan dot plot, uh, dot plot machine, which allowed the woman to do self-examination at home and keep all findings on a mobile phone. So if you just can see on a picture, it looks like plastic probe uh, while woman moving the plastic probe around the breast. The picture appeared on the screen and if you forgot to cover any area, the picture will remind you which area hasn't been covered yet and where you need to put the probe to check your breast. If you've got any problems, let's say any benign uh, lumps and bumps or even cyst, it will keep um, information about this and next month it will check again. So I would not say that it can detect breast cancer, but it will definitely can detect um, early stage of change in the breast. And these talented girls, uh, they said that they found that lots of women know about self-examination, uh, but they they sometimes scared. They're not sure whether they can do it in the right way. Sometimes they're scared with what they could find and they felt more comfortable by using this machine and seeing on the screen how they're doing and that this in information saved and again repeat every month over and over again. So um, they already passed one study in with very, very good results. And nowadays in the UK, there are a few more research and studies going on just to find out whether we can definitely use it in future as a home portable machine, which is, would be probably a revolutionary um, idea. Uh, so probably I will repeat again, again and again that we should remember about ourselves. Uh, we should invest a few minutes every single month to take um, control of our life and be in charge of our health. We doctors not with you every single day, but you are with your body every single day. And you, the first person who can pick up any change in the breast, whether it's skin, whether it's lump and bump, whether it's even a feeling, just tell us, come to us. Because the earlier we can pick up any change, the better the outcome, the better the prognosis and survival if it's something sinister. So, um, we also would like to remind you over and over again, if you remember risk factors, that first four risk factors on the second page, which is about alcohol intake, healthy and um, healthy weight, especially after menopause, and a stable weight, regular physical activities, regular exercise, and a healthy diet. It's so simple and it's so difficult and it's so important. So probably it's one of the most frequently advice you could hear from us, but we can repeat this again and again. It does work and it does work to, to do it. Thank you so much. And um, now I am going to check if you've got any questions. Just please put it on the chat box. Let me check the questions. So just give me one minute. And I see it on the screen. Where the first one? This one. So I'm going from here there, yeah? So what are the DHA guidelines for one of those? Yes. So um, the first question from um, Catherine about DHA guidelines for mammograms. So, um, we um, in King's College Hospital, we are going with the British guidelines, of course, and uh, we are aware that British guidelines about mammograms, they are quite behind entire worldwide. So here in Dubai, it's very strongly advisable to have mammogram every single year from the age of 14. But we are here with a private medicine, with the private insurance companies. So if you have just mammogram every single year, it's very likely you need to pay for this unless something else going on, unless something else was picked up before. And this is just monitoring, which coming from the breast cancer clinic. 
So what we've done as a King's College Hospital, we've done a um, few healthcare packages and we've got leaflet and also information on our website. So these healthcare packages, they've got lots of investigations like a healthy checkup, which includes for women, pap smear test, which is screening for cervical uh, cancer, mammogram, extensive blood test, uh, check of your heart uh, health, also uh, ultrasound scan, consultation with the family medicine consultant, consultation with the cardiologist, consultation with the dietitian. And all priced, it's very affordable, and vast majority of private insurance companies, they do cover this healthy um, checkup. And probably uh, it's the most advisable uh, from now on for every single man and woman to do this uh, executive health checkup on a, um, under the insurance companies. And we could see that lots of patients coming to see us again and again every single year. Of course, if you're under the age of 40, we've got another package for you. And it's very likely would be not mammogram, but ultrasound scan. So just about mammograms, remember from the age of 40, every single year. What's the difference between the ultrasound scan and mammogram and how do you take the fear out of both for many women who may be nervous? Mm. Uh, next question from Kathleen as well. So um, ultrasound scan, uh, it's the scan which all of us, we know um, we've got with the jelly, for example, when we're pregnant. So again, there is no um, feeling whatsoever. And these waves, they go inside the breast and image showed us whether the breast has any problems or not. So mammogram is X-ray, they are different. And sometimes breast and clinic would like to have them both. So they're giving us different pictures and different understanding what's going on inside the breast. Because ultrasound scan has no radiation whatsoever and quite good um, examination and investigation tool for dense breast, we advise this under the age of 40. From the age of 40, mammogram is the best. But if anyone comes in with a lump, very likely you will have both after the age of 40 mammogram and ultrasound scan. Because to have a biopsy, that piece of uh, tissue, you have to have ultrasound scan. It showed us exactly what's the size of the lump, how far it's going, and it's very easy to do. So both of them, I would like to reassure, you don't have any feelings when you've got of them. And probably if you've got any fear, just come to us. We can explain more in details what's this uh, investigation about. But definitely it's worth to do if you worry, just to take this anxiety away. So if anyone wants some more information about health screening, please reach out to me. On, OK, yeah. So um, uh, we would uh, pass to um, Catherine all information about uh, health screening packages and please come. And also I would like to highlight to everyone, I guess we've got a um, uh, vast majority of women. Just if you know any men who are concerned about any new changes in the breast, tell them, come to see us, come to see a doctor, because uh, it's not a good point just to be in belief that if they meant they could not have breast cancer. Next one, what's the difference? Okay, uh, give me one second. What are the, um, the session will be recorded. Sorry, I'm just trying to find more questions. I think I went in the wrong directions. But please let me know if um, you would like me uh, to explain anything else more in details or do you have any other questions? I'm not missing them. Hi, Doctor. I've just taken myself off mute. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sorry, apologies to everyone. I have a, a chest infection, yeah. so um, I'm not um, coming off mute much. But okay. there is another question that yeah. just popped up, Doctor. I don't know yeah. if you can I see just that there. To ask a question with regards to menopause. 
Okay, um, Fatima, uh, please ask. Um, just in case, if anyone would like to ask me something privately, uh, I attached my email address. Mm -hmm. So, alarms common after menopause. Um, I would not say this way, Fatma. Um, anyone can have lumps and bumps at some stage of the life, yeah? Especially before the periods, for example, when our breasts feel lumpy. I, I cannot remember any um, pathology or any condition which definitely um, tell us that after menopause our breast more lumpy. Usually it's vice versa, um, breast getting softer. So um, if you think that breast getting lumpier, please come and just let check you over. And once we know that mammogram and ultrasounds are normal, so probably it's absolutely normal. So um, during our life, we may have lumps and bumps, but we can see in younger women, probably in 20s, early 30s, lots of lots of lumps and bumps, and they, uh, in vast majorities of cases, they are benign. It's like a connective tissue or lump of fat tissue or it's a cyst, like a sac filled with fluid, which going up and down. But again, only investigations such as um, clinical examination, mammogram, ultrasound scan, and sometimes MRI scan can show us exactly what's a slump. So if you think that lump coming after menopause and not going away, just come, come to see us to, to find out what's this exactly. But I would not say that it's typical and common. What's the percentage of possibility of breast cancer for men compared to women? Um, thank you so much, Harry, uh, about the um, question about men. So uh, most of the countries, they found that if you compare uh, all new cases of breast cancer in the leading Western countries, why I'm saying this, because in Dubai, statistics a bit complicated with the moving uh, population. In the countries such as USA, UK, and the most leading um, European countries, the percentage is between 0.6 and 1% men uh, out of all new cases of breast cancer. So it's uh, sound very low, but when you're looking at the um, entire number worldwide, it's, it's a huge number. And um, I saw last week a uh, statistic about uh, um, the UK number of men who are dying from breast cancer. Sometimes they don't know, it's like autopsy result. Each year, there are at least 80 men dying from breast cancer in the UK. Sometimes they aware about this diagnosis, sometimes not. So it's a bit shocking, this number. So it is real, cancer is real. Uh, thank you. What is uh, what is the statistic of risk in breast cancer if your mother, grandmother has? Um, uh, thank you, Catherine, about the question uh, regarding statistics of family history. I think I had that slide before. Uh, the risk can be calculated by genetic team because there are lots of lots of other factors. It's not only about your grandmother and mother. It's also there are few faulty genes that which can be checked. But if you remember that um, most of the breast cancers which we can diagnose, they come in without family history. Having family history, it means that your risk is higher, maybe one, uh, one in three or one in five. It depends which faulty genes you've got. So you, once you are at risk, you can do something about this. You could change other modifiable risk factors and you could do self-screening all over and over again every single month. So um, if you're not sure, if you worry, just come. We will speak about this, how to do um, your regular self-examination in this case, because I think it's very important once your grandmother and mother had breast cancer. And of course, remember to start mammogram from the age of 14. Cyst fibroadenoma duct ectasia means greater chances of breast cancer. Um, not really. Um, cyst, definitely not. Um, cyst and fibroadenoma, lipoma, 
they are very benign. They never turn into the cancer. As far as I remember, there are only few, um, two or three benign conditions. They're very, very rare, and they can be diagnosed only with a biopsy, which gives us small risk of turning into the cancer. And um, it's, it's rare, but it should be investigated, of course. And once you've got this result after biopsy, uh, you will be definitely warned that this is the change which may go into something sinister. And that's why you are advised to have this monitoring on a regular basis. Uh, no, them not. Uh, which type of biopsy is the most effective? It is, is it painful. Um, thank you, Mary. Um, so biopsy, uh, it's when they take in small piece of tissue with a quite big needle from the breast. In vast majority of cases, it's happening with ultrasound scan. So I had it because I've got uh, fibroadenoma in one of my breasts. That's why I could share with you my experience. Um, so after I found a lump in my breast, uh, it was in England. Uh, I was uh, referred by my GP within two weeks to see breast surgeon uh, in breast clinic. It was very overwhelming experience, even being a doctor, when you know that it's unlikely cancer. I've, I was sitting in a room with the patients who are going through the treatment, so I, I had a chat to them. So I was scared really that time till the moment I had my results back. So it's very good experience with NHS. And of course, here we've got the same. So you've got a consultation with um, consultant who examine you after you've got if you um, over 40 mammogram and after you definitely for biopsy will have ultrasound scan. So um, with the one on the one side, it will be a probe of ultrasound scan, which absolutely not painful. They can give you a little bit of injection to numb the area and quite a big needle going inside and taking this piece. So it takes about, I would say, a few seconds. And sometimes, for example, in my case, because I had two lumps sitting together, I had two biopsies at the same time. So just like a shot. It's a bit painful, I would say, if you ever had a blood test. It's slightly more, maybe not painful, more uncomfortable. And after that, very likely you will have a bruise, which will settle down and fade away within a couple of weeks. But believe me, it's worth to receive that letter with absolutely normal result and to know that you've got something benign, nothing to worry about. So I would not say it's painful, it's very uncomfortable. But once you know that you need this just for your own reassurance and your assurance of your family, I think it's worth to do this. And of course, you always can ask for more pain relief. It's not a problem at all. But I know that some people that go without any pain relief and it's still fine. And um, there are not really many different types of biopsy. It's just biopsy. It's a special tool which going inside and take a little piece. Is it anything else you would like to ask me? OK. Is radioactive iodine pills treatment applicable for the early stages? Is it applicable only for popular? Um, um, thank you, Harry. Honestly, I'm not aware about this, and I would leave it to breast surgeon to say about radioactive iodine pills treatment. Again, with the treatment, nowadays it's a very, very tailored specifically for one particular patient. Believe me, even if you could see our main uh, breast surgeon, Dr. Rita, she would tell you that there is no the same type of treatment, no way, even if the same age, the same general health, even the same um, type of cancer, they may go by different ways and they may go by different additional um, treatments. So I probably, uh, I would not comment on this. It's a very specific area of breast surgeon and Probably it depends on which type of breast cancer. Sorry, I hope I'm not confusing you.
Anything? Hi, Dr. T Tatiana, I think that's probably um, uh, all the questions for now. Um, but as, as we said, the session is being recorded. And um, so anyone that would like to have the session, they can just reach out to me on my email and I can share it. Um, but Dr. Tatiana, thanks so much for being with 